Queen of Sheba. Join us as we discover the stories of the black women in the Bible. And so when we come back into the Bible now mm -hmm. and we're looking into Africa, this is the story of black women. So right. we're going to be looking not at the sons of Ham, mm. but the daughters of Ham. That's right up my alley. <laughs> so for, for um, clarification, we're going to use the four people group that came out of Ham's four sons. Excellent. Right? The first people group is the Cush. The second one is Mizoram, then we have Put, right. and then we have Canaan. Canaan. So we're going to only have in this particular session today, we're only going to have time to cover the first two, Cush okay. and Mizoram. We'll follow up if you guys consider that if it was value added enough for you, right? right. Um, you, we'll follow up with another session and you can kind of see a little bit more from there yeah. what's going on. Okay. Let's see if we can unpack this um, nations a little bit more, Okay. right? And so what you have is this. These Cush were the kingdom builder mm. people. Good. They they weren't the, the, they weren't necessarily the largest in population, but they were the dominant. They were what we call first world, right? If we're thinking today, right? Okay. You have, like you have the U.S. and mm -hmm. and Britain and these first world countries. Well, right. biblically, in the ancient times, that's what the Kush people were. Wow. That's, that's where Assyria, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, Mesopotamia came mm -hmm. from. Yeah. So, did you know that the biblical Tower of Babel? was built by a Kush ruler. Didn't. Thank you for enlightening me. <laughs> right, so that's again going yeah. back to Nimrod, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, also, like later on, like Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. They built um, the Hanging Gardens, which was such a, a architectural wonder okay. that it was considered one of the seventh wonders of the ancient world. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that uh, shocks a lot of people. National Geographic, I will say National Enquirer the first time we <laughs> talked about it. Right? But, but um, National we have more Geographic. Value with Nas <laughs> National Geographic. Yeah. When they, they, they did a feature on this very mm -hmm. recently, um, and they were talking about the black pharaohs okay. because one of the, the Nubian kings or the Kush kings, because you can say Nubia or Kush um, interchangeably, gotcha. um, was Pi. He mm -hmm. conquered Egypt and mm. started a 75-year dynasty, which is called the 25th Egyptian dynasty, wow. where okay. they, the, the black Nubian kings were mm -hmm. actually rulers from, from Ethiopia all the way up to Egypt, and they, they were pharaohs of Egypt at that time period. Okay. And so that's, and to give you a more biblical context, mm -hmm. the son of Pi is the person who helped Hez King Hezekiah in the Bible when wow. the Assyrians were coming to get him. So just to give you some biblical context mm -hmm. of that, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to focus not just on the Sinar kingdom, we're going to actually narrow our focus for the first woman okay. and start to lay the groundwork of the Nubian kingdom. Excellent. This Nubian kingdom, now I'm going to let you read some of these off right here. Tell, me, tell us some facts about the Nubian kingdom. Yeah, well, based on the fact that we're doing the discovery story about black women in the Bible, I couldn't wait until you got to this point because I want to see where I fit in. You tell me about the guys and the men and everything, which is great, but I want to know where I belong and how I fit into the story. But based on this slide that we're talking about now, the, the largest Nubian pyramid was for a woman. Queen of what is that name? Can you pronounce uh, that one for me? Shana Kadaketel. Ooh, whatever, yeah. whatever she was, just <laughs> to have a pyramid, the first pyramid built for her. That's amazing. So the reason for that is this: mm -hmm. that it was normal mm -hmm. if an, a, a Nubian king died, his queen would succeed him, and she would rule until she decides she either wants to retire, pass it on to her kid or not, but she was the official wow, ruler. Okay. This was unheard of, but this was normal in the Nubian society because they were a very much woman empowered society. And so that's the background that you have when you think of a Nubian mm -hmm. queen. I want you to think that this is not some passive person on the side. Excellent. Yep. She mm -hmm. is ruling an extremely wealthy, powerful empire with total control. I am so glad we're having this discussion because so many times as women, we we are devalued in so many places and in so many areas of our lives. So it's, it's good to have history and background to kind of help us to 
you know, reverse and reconnect so that we can go forward. What do you think about it? I agree. <laughs> and too often what, what I'm finding, and this is why I was so passionate about doing this study, is that we, we get to this place to where people want to retell um, the actual stories mm -hmm. in a way that demotes the woman's role. Yes. And so, but historically, the women have had large impact on yes, society. That's right. And some civilization actually elevate women as, as strong leaders and, yes. and, and, and thought leaders and spiritual leaders and, and political leaders. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is that was normal for the Nubian society. Nubian um, today mm -hmm. is what we would consider Sudan and Ethiopia. Okay. Ethiopia being the longest lasting. Like, for example, Ethiopia right now is the only African nation that was never colonized. And do we know why? So they are fighters. So you got to understand when you're looking at the roots of a, of a group of people, mm -hmm. these are proud world conquering type people. Okay. The world might change but the culture of the people stayed the same mm. and so they fought there was european countries that came and tried to capture mm -hmm. ethiopia but they fought for that freedom that mm -hmm. they still have today mm -hmm. and so that's also why ethiopia actually has some of the oldest churches and most famous right. church structures yes. in africa yes because they are part of the biblical story it's one of the few places in the bible that has the same yeah, name exactly in the bible exactly. it has, today. has not changed yep definitely so now that we've gotten this context right mm -hmm. and you understand the nubian people you know where mm -hmm. they're located you know their politics you know how pro-woman they are mm -hmm. we're going to introduce Introduce you to the first black woman. Yeah. And this particular woman, her name is Makeda. And she's wealthy too, according to this one. So she is the queen yeah. of Sheba. She's a Nubian queen, mm -hmm. right? What that means, and you gotta get this, is that her country is a country that is known for having a lot of gold yes. and a lot of resources. So she had wealth, she had an army, she had Full independence as the ruler of that nation yeah okay. so when she enters this biblical story mm -hmm. because she heard that there's this up-and-coming place called Israel yeah that is starting to trying to be first world because I know we think a lot of times of Africa today and we mm -hmm. think you know that's a third world country mm -hmm. at this point in history though they were the first world country, yeah, definitely. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the Israelite nation that's coming up, mm -hmm. she heard rumors and she's like, that can't be true. Yeah. We're the biggest and best. So she actually went on this kind of like pilgrimage to go check this guy she out. She wanted to know. And it wasn't a close yeah. trip. They're talking months, if not over a year, okay. for her to travel from where she's at there with the entourage that she brought. Yeah. And when I say she brought, I mean the Bible says that nobody's ever brought more spices mm -hmm. and medicine because medicine is spices is not just seasons for your food. It was the the healing balms okay. and and the herbs and the things you did if you were sick and what mm -hmm. you rub on the wound. All of these stuff is what she introduced, but she brought it in larger quantities than they've ever seen. Yeah, she sounds. You know, I've never known that. Queen of Sheba, I've read so much about her in the Bible. I didn't know she was Nubian. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Nubian? So, and, and this goes back to because we oftentimes mm -hmm. don't connect the place mm -hmm. that the Bible references to the, the, to the historical context. Right. We don't always understand who the Bible is referencing. True, true. So mm -hmm. if Sheba is one of the Nubian places, King, um, king countries or nations mm -hmm. that's part of what you call a Nubian kingdom. Right. And depending on the time period that you're talking about, they either control portions or they control the the whole okay. of like that side of the world, yeah. <laughs> really, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And so now this is why I, I'm bringing this up. If you understand that her Nubian traditions meant mm -hmm. she can be an independent strong woman really now then you will get why she felt confident enough mm -hmm. to challenge solomon yes which the gotcha. world was saying was the wisest man on the planet yeah. she showed up to check him out that's right because she felt she had the qualifications and had the the courage and the the, the right mm -hmm. to challenge him and she challenged him until she felt confident that what he said right. is true. But it, this is so important because 
I'm hoping that our listeners will connect, especially the women, because we, we've been dumbed down so much from all angles and different society, you know, and around the world, but we need to find our worth. And I think by going back and, and doing the research and connecting with folks like you have done the research to, to share the stories of our worth and our value, we can now stand up in our place in our families, in the community, in the workplace, where, wherever we are, not with a bodacious, um, arrogant way, but knowing that we are valuable, we're, we're you know, we we have worth. Yeah. I agree, and, and I think when when I think we rob women of the ro proper role God has for them, mm -hmm. um, we demean them when we use religion and politics yes. and culture yes, to yes. say they should be small mm. and tell a small story. When in fact, this woman changed the course of Israel's story by in introducing them to things that mm -hmm. they hadn't been exposed to. And now, the Bible does not say she left pregnant. <laughs> but the Egyptian, I um, mean, Egyptian, the Ethiopian official book of records and, and historians, um, is the Judaist, the, the I said Judaeus, no. The Israelite historians, okay. the Muslim historians, mm -hmm. all are in agreement she left pregnant. <laughs> Ooh, sound like a tabloid. Huh? And not only that, <laughs> it, um, her son, right, uh, Menelik the mm first, -hmm. actually became the first member of a new line of royal dynasty. And that is the legacy that came out. And that's the impact her encounter with Solomon has. Mm. But Thank you for watching this video series with Kevin Melifant and Shelia Malcolm on Black Women in the Bible. Please share this with a friend.